in december and since that time under rule one hundred and forty seven of our revered rules of procedure you have called before you thirteen members of this parliament to face disciplinary action and it seems to me that this has been done on a pretty arbitrary basis. one of the ones that you have called cathy sinnott from our group i doubt has ever shouted at anybody in her life. another one of the members that you called to appear before the headmaster's study an austrian member was actually in frankfurt on the day so he must have one hell of a voice must not he? and i ask why only thirteen? there were about eighty of us um, involved in these so called disturbances. in fact you named me yourself in the conference of presidents as being one of the causes of the trouble so why am I not being punished? I'm Spartacus. I am Spartacus. Am I? I am Spartacus. I am Spartacus. Tomorrow, 11:30, the prime ministers will sign a final treaty. None of them have read. They sign a bundle of amendments they cannot even understand. Yesterday, the Danish Parliament refused a referendum on a treaty they have not read. They breach the Danish constitution. All negotiations in the IGC and the Linguistic Lawyers Group have been kept absolutely secret to many members in this Parliament. First, they undo two referendums rejecting the constitution. Then they negotiate in secret and keep the content under a new name. The Lisbon Treaty will dissolve the existing EU establish a new state with joint citizenship, legal personality and all tools of nation states. Most laws will be adopted by civil servants in secret. Democratic deficit will grow. My group proposed to cancel the signature until you have finally read the final text. Es eine Strategie gab, den politischen Gegner niederzuschreien, und zwar chorweise. Die Fraktion, die das dort eingeführt hat, war die Fraktion von Adolf Hitler. Heute habe ich mich daran erinnert gefühlt. Vielen Dank. Shouting down representatives of Parliament, Commission and Council during the signing ceremony was intolerable and must not be tolerated. It brings the worst of the football stadium into Europe's highest chamber and recalls the actions of the communists in the Russian Diet and the National Socialists in the German Reichstag. My formal request, Madam President, is this. My group demands that in future the Presidency use the powers granted to it under our rules of procedure to evict from the Chamber members behaving in that fashion. Colleagues, ne dramatisez pas trop. S'il y a 50 fous dans une salle, il y en a 700 qui sont cons et ne faites pas une histoire d'État parce qu'il y a 50 débiles mentaux qui ont dérangé ce qui s'est passé tout à l'heure. Calmons-nous, calmons-nous et grave, ne demandons pas la sortie physique. Je crois qu'un Parlement libre est un Parlement qui supporte des fous même s'ils sont désagréables. I took part in a peaceful manifestation against a celebration of a charter which is part of a constitution where I cannot even get the consolidated texts and see the relevance and the meaning. And you cannot as well. What you are going to sign tomorrow is a treaty none of you have read simply because it's not possible to read it. You conquer our voting time to, to celebrate a victory over democracy and therefore I will not attack my colleagues. But I have to say to Mr. Schulz, I did not take part in crime. I understand it entirely, but we have in Denmark a different tradition. So I, had, I was there with my T-shirt calling for a referendum. And I think all of us should call for a referendum. This is the democracy norm you are defending. Thank you. I rise on rule.
Rule 170, Paragraph 4, uh, to make the point that this proposal that we're being asked to vote on gives the President of this Parliament such arbitrary and dictatorial powers that no one that believes in democracy would ever even consider it. But to, but to be asked for us to vote on it when the political groups in this Parliament have not even had time to discuss it surely, surely cannot be right. And so I ask that this vote is adjourned to the next session in Strasbourg so that people actually get a chance to understand the huge implications of this vote if it's passed. Could it be that the reason you've acted in this arbitrary fashion, tearing up the rule of law, is because you are taking out on us the surrogate contempt you feel for the national electorates who keep voting no on the Lisbon Treaty whenever they're given the opportunity? If I'm wrong, prove me wrong by holding the referendums that you used to support when you thought you could win them. Put the Treaty of Lisbon to the people. Pactio Olisipiensis. Mr. President, an absolute majority is not the same as the rule of law. I accept that there is a minority in this House in favour of a referendum, that there is a minority in this House against the ratification of the Lisbon Treaty. But this House must nonetheless follow its own rule books. And by, by popular acclamation, to discard the rules under which we operate is indeed an act of arbitrary and despotic rule. It is only my regard for you, Mr. Chairman, and my personal affection for you that prevents me from likening it to the Ermechtigungsgesetz of 1933, which was also voted through by a parliamentary majority. And I ask this how you come up to vote it. Will you come up to est intolérable, nous allons prendre des sanctions internes au niveau du groupe et je vais demander l'exclusion de M. Hanen au niveau de notre groupe. I'm surprised we have the front to call this a debate because the minister didn't tell us any of the substance of the negotiations. But of course there is no debate, is there? No debate in the national parliaments, no informed opinion in the press, no debate at all. And why? Because this whole treaty is being put together in secret. And that is being done because you don't want to involve the citizens of Europe. You're fearful that the more they find out about your grandiose plans, the more likely they are to vote no. And what's worse still is the downright dishonesty with which this whole process is being pursued. For Angela Merkel, in a letter, to talk about the proposal to use different terminology without changing the legal substance. I mean, it's, it's Alice through the looking glass stuff, isn't it? It's the twisting of language. It is the deliberate attempt to stop there being free and fair referendums in European countries. It's your, it's your plan to act like a bulldozer, just to sweep aside the French referendum result, the Dutch referendum result, to pursue your political goals without taking the people with you. Well, I've no doubt you think that you're going to get away with it. But if you're proud of your European project, if you're true Democrats, then you join me in the call for let the people decide their own future. Don't foist it upon them.